girl. You just told me I had to go home because I got a. You weren't gonna take it off. I'm not. I'm not. Cause I'm standing up for what was right. I'm not taking it off. Sammy said we could wear whatever mask. No, she did not. She said it had to be plain. You can't bring politics into the building. Bro, I'm not bringing politics in. This is what I'm standing for. Like, how is this considered politics? How is it not, Denzel? I'm not taking it off. Okay, well then there's nothing I can do for you. I'm just doing my job. I'm doing mine. I'm doing mine too. And I'm standing up for my peoples too. You don't get it. You don't either. No, I do get it. No, you don't. Because if you did, this wouldn't be a problem. It's not that it's a problem with me, Denzel. It's a company thing. Man, I ain't trying to hear that. You let somebody wear something that said something about white people on it? Bro, if that's what they stand for. A retired Navy captain from Atlantic Beach has stepped down from his role with the U.S. Naval Academy Alumni Association after he used racial slurs while live on Facebook. This all happened Friday night when Captain Scott Bethman accidentally went live on a local Facebook community group. Bethman and his wife issued an apology less than two hours ago. On your side's David Jones has been following this story all day. Somehow I w clicked onto some live event. The voice you hear is that of retired Navy Captain Scott Bethman as he realizes his phone has been streaming on Facebook. For more than 30 minutes, the Atlantic Beach resident was live on one of the community groups, talking to his wife about the Black Lives Matter movement while watching TV, the phone in his pocket. You haven't even seen LinkedIn and all this We support, we support. Every single company has put their word out. Everything we got, I've gotten an email about how we're supporting and we need to fix this problem and f you. So all the white people have to say something nice to the black that works in the office. But the black don't get fired. On Saturday, Bethman stepped down from his position as a trustee with the board of the U.S. Naval Academy Alumni Association. He also resigned from the local Jacksonville chapter. In a statement, he and his wife wrote the following. There are no words that can appropriately express how mortified and apologetic my wife and I are about the insensitive things we said that were captured on social media. There is never a time when it is appropriate to use derogatory terms when talking about our fellow man. We intend on using this experience as an opportunity to grow, listen, learn, and reflect. We are deeply sorry for the impact our actions have had on the Naval Academy, my fellow servicemen and women, our former colleagues, friends, family, and the community as a whole. We are committed to educating ourselves more on the racial inequalities in this country and being better people. David Jones, First Coast News, on your side. White people are racist. So <laughs> I put this up because I really want any white person in the room to know up front that this is what we're dealing with, that it's not going to be this coddling of white tears and what that looks like. We're not going to discuss, oh, maybe some of us have worked it out. No, you're always going to be racist, actually. So even when you're on your path to trying to figure out how to be a better human being, um, because I believe that white people are born into not being human, like that actually instead of <laughs> people of color and black folks being dehumanized, that actually everyone is dehumanized off rip within white supremacy, that y'all are born into a life to not be human, and that's what y'all are taught to do, to be demons. So in this particular way, white people are all racist. There's a lot of racial tension going on right now in society. When did it come ahead? That's what I'm thinking about today. For blacks, it was George Floyd. For whites, I'm sure it was Nakers. I just felt it in my bones that it was Nakers. Los Angeles, Nakers, Los Angeles, like this could be Los Angeles. Nakers Los Angeles Aside from what's going on at this very moment, black people keep coming for people who feel like they have nothing to do with racism and slavery. It's annoying them. And so it annoys them at first. And then when you come for their jobs and their livelihood and their reputation, it gets more serious. So right now we have three black men found hanging from trees within a 13 day span. The bodies of Malcolm Harsh, 38 years old, found in Victorville, California on May 31st. 
the unidentified black man found hanging in Manhattan Park in New York City on June 9th, and then Robert Fuller, 23 or 24 years old, different sources say different ages, found in Palmdale, California on June 12th. Is this related? Is this retaliatory? Black retaliation, the way it's being done today, is not done right from a moral standpoint. And also, we don't have enough power at this point in time to be abusive towards whites and then turn around and beg them for money or representation or housing and other things. The retaliation is disorganized and it's a result of emotional dysregulation and we have the wrong people leading the community and everybody thinks it's okay. Nobody has a problem with it, obviously, because nobody's talking about it. I want to remind everybody that no one cares about black people emotional yet again. It's only white cucks that care about that sort of thing. Real white people don't actually care. Also, black people are retaliating in the same fashion towards light-skinned people. I'm not being a crybaby. It's a serious issue. Serious enough for me to talk about it. Nobody cares because they know light-skinned people have nowhere to go. Because they're black. Light-skinned people are the white people of the black community. And again, you see what they're doing to whites. So why doesn't anybody believe light-skinned people when they complain about the same thing being done to them? It's a little different though, because light-skinned black people never did anything to anyone. So basically they just exist for everyone to get their aggression off on. And yes, I'm talking about being light-skinned in this video because light-skinned people are tired of living like Jews in Nazi Germany within the, the black community with all of the hate and propaganda going on. Everybody's fully aware of it, but they just can't help but to participate in it. And on that note, the black community, the black community needs to learn from those people, the Jews, about how to turn things around. Begging and being emotional doesn't work. It seems like it's effective right now, but it's not. Nobody cares if a black person is emotional. No one cares. You could have the most emotional speech. It's not going to pull at the heartstrings of white people. That's not how they operate. It's not how they think. It's not how they operate. You should know this by now. They're unaffected by poignant speeches. Rallying. They're unaffected. So right now it works, but we see what else is going on. So overall, this is a childish way to handle things. We need the mature people of the community to intervene, please. Because the very few who are um, mature and they're trying to help out, they're trying to lead, they're burned out. So the way we are doing things is causing other people to retaliate. Now we're hanging on trees again, among other things. And this is so upsetting to me. This is upsetting to me. It's upsetting to everybody else. It's, it's a hard topic to even touch on because it's so upsetting. And I feel like we could change it, not by shutting up, and not voicing our concerns or opinions, but I feel like we could do it in a different way because you're just, you're upsetting them. Who cares if they're upset? Okay, if you live in the boonies and you don't have to worry about them, that's fine. Like I said last year in my videos, that's fine. But the other people are being murdered out of retaliation you need to care about them so jews they banded together they only married other jews they quietly set themselves up economically today all you can say about jews is that they're annoying and that they're cheap 
but they're set up, they're taken care of, and they own a lot. I'm wondering, when are black people going to follow suit?